Hello, hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Alicia and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this cup using tissue paper, stickers, and glitter, of course, and washi tape. So if you're interested to see how I did this, stick around and I'm gonna go ahead and get started. A 20 ounce skinny by Makerflow and I've already sanded it and spray painted it metallic gold uh, it's Rust-Oleum's metallic gold and if you're not sure how to prep a cup go ahead and jump back on my channel or I'll try to link it somewhere in my video or at the end I'm still figuring out how to link things within the video but um, so I've already done that in another video so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Mod Podge and I am going to take my Mod Podge brush and a rubber band. And what I'm really doing with the rubber band is I'm just kind of marking off where I want this to stop because I'm gonna be glittering the bottom. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just like, you know, here a stop here. So I know that I want about this much glitter at the bottom. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it on there and get it, you know, around. Just get it around and, you know, somewhat even. All right. So I'm going to move this off to the side for right now. Actually, what I want to do first is I, because I want to create texture, this is kind of a big piece. So I am going to, I just want to crinkle this up. I'll get this like the crinkle paper. You get, you know, just get lots and lots of crinkles in there. All right. That's what I'm looking for. Nice and wrinkly. And I have a tear in this, so I'm going to wrinkle up this other one just in case. This one's pretty, this one doesn't have any tears in it. So, and guys, the reason why I went with gold is because... This, you can't see it, but like it does have kind of a hint of a gold shimmer to it. Um, and also the glitter I'm using has um, a color shift to gold. So that's why I went with the gold. Plus I didn't have like this sort of deep coral color in spray paint. So that's why I went with the, the gold. All right, let's grab our Mod Podge and start getting this all around the cup. And I love, I love the squeeze bottle. I absolutely love this. You can get, you know, such a controlled flow with it. And also, um, not only can you get a controlled flow, but you can, um, you're not dipping into it. So there's no risk of like glitter getting into it. Cause I've had my Podge bottles and lots of glitter in it. And that kind of poses a problem when you've got purple glitter and you're trying to do a white cup. So the squeeze bottle is absolutely amazing. I ordered these off of Amazon uh, and you can get them from the Dollar Tree. They do have like the condiment bottles. So I'm just doing nice even strokes around the cup. I just wanna make, you know, it doesn't really matter if there's globby spots, but it, like, you don't want too many globby spots, but um, you know, just get it kind of as even as you can. And now I'm gonna take this piece without the hole in it, and I am going to lay my cup down, leave a little at the top, and I'm just gonna wrap this around. There's a lot of excess, but that's okay. You can easily cut it off. This tissue paper is really, really easy to work with. Although it is fragile, so be, you know, be mindful. It's very, very fragile. So until it's dry, you run the risk of, you know, lots of tears and stuff. So 
So I'm just gonna put a little Mod Podge here on my seam. Overlap it just a hair. I don't wanna to overlap too, too much because this paper is really thin. So you're gonna see that overlap. And you don't want, I don't want too much of like of a thick spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my scissors and trim off the excess. And because this paper is really thin, it's gonna kind of mask itself. You're not really gonna notice the seam. So if it's not straight, you're, it's totally okay. And plus, you know, remember we're, you know, we're, we're going for texture here. So, all right, so you can feel the wetness through this paper. So I'm gonna let this dry for an hour before I put two, two coats of Mod Podge over this. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to trim, I am going to trim this off and I'm just going to use my scissors and I'm going to use the cup as a guide. I don't know if you guys can see. I promise you guys, I'm going to be angling different soon. I'm going to be filming differently soon. Um, I ordered a different kind of tripod so that you can guys kind of come over my shoulder rather than come from the front it's because I feel like you guys aren't seeing what I'm doing well enough. So, and I'm just going to put a little bit of this Mod Podge around the top. And we will be sanding this back a little bit later, but for right now, we're gonna leave that like that. And that's gonna seal it around the top really well. All right, and so for the bottom, I am going to, you know what, I'm gonna take my craft knife and trim this very gently all right, so I'm gonna trim this very gently, like I was saying, and I'm using my craft knife, and I'm speeding this up because it did take me a little bit. Um, in retrospect, I probably should have waited till it dried, and it probably would have uh, went smoother, but it snagged up a little bit, so I was being you know, extra careful not to tear it past the rubber band. So yeah, you know what guys, just make sure you let it dry first. Don't get impatient like me and want to trim it off. I mean, if you can, if you, you know, if you're impatient like me, then go ahead and trim it. Just be really, really careful because it is wet. All right, guys, so I'm just going to speed you up a little bit because you already saw me put my podge on the cup and then apply the um, tissue paper. So I'm just applying the Mod Podge over it. Um, make sure you get a nice even coat and go different directions because this, you know, the paper is textured. So you want to get in there and, uh, you know, make sure that it's sealed really well. So I'm just showing you doing the one coat. Um, it's not much different than when I applied it just directly to the cup. And then um, I'm going to let this dry for about an hour. Then I'm going to put on my second coat, let it dry at least another hour. I might even let it dry longer. Um, it depends on your, you know, your weather conditions and your heat and your humidity. So, you know, just make sure that it's nice and dry to the touch and you don't feel like any wetness under the layers. Okay, guys, this has two coats of Mod Podge on and it is dry. So I'm going to move on to glittering the bottom. And I am actually going to use the rubber band again, like I did, just to kind of mark off and give me some guidance. I swear, I don't want it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it around so you have, you know, just some sort of a border. 
All right, and I'm gonna get that on there. And you know, just in case, and I don't think I mentioned this, the reason why I did two coats of Mod Podge over the paper is I wanted to get a good seal because I don't want the epoxy to like wet the paper and lift it or distort it. I just, you know, I wanted to kind of like freeze in place with the, um, with the texture as it is. So that's why I do two coats. You can do more. I would not recommend doing less. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply my glitter using Mod Podge. Normally when I'm using a chunky glitter, I do epoxy, but I just don't feel like mixing up epoxy right now. I glittered a lot of cups and I've got a big glitter mess going on and I just, I don't feel like dealing with it. So I'm gonna do Mod Podge, which like I said, I normally don't do with the chunky, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay this on a little bit thick and my chunky also has a little sister, but I can't remember the name. I transferred it into a bottle the other night and I had the label cut out and I think I threw it away by accident. And so I'm forgetting little sis's name. And I know one of you GMI tribers will know what the name is. Cause I even tried looking it up on the, on the site and I just couldn't find it. And I just didn't have the patience. So I just, um, but I will have it by the time I finish this video. So get my Mod Podge on. Um, I want a good thick coat. And if anybody's not familiar with Mod Podge, it dries it uh, goes on white and dries clear, has kind of an odor to it. Um, I know Rachel of Mr. Nola's Glitter always calls it the devil's the devil's glue because she hates, she despises the way it smells. I always crack up when she says that. Um, I don't think she uses it a lot, but when she does, she always calls it the devil's glue. And um, I'm just going to, I'm doing a, a full glitter dump here. I'm not, you know, I'm not... Um, reserving anything. I'm just going in and just giving it everything. The, and this glitter, oh, I didn't give you the name. This one is called Bonfire and I am absolutely in love with this. This reddish orange um, like color shift. It is so, so pretty. I mean, just, it's absolutely gorgeous. So, I'm going to tap that and I'm just actually going to press that in. I'm going to leave that there for a second. And tap that and I'm going to come in. See, this is like, so like I used the Mod Podge and I don't feel like I got really good coverage. So I'm going to come in with Bonfire's little sister. All right, guys, so I remembered as I was editing this video, I remembered that Bonfire's little sister's name is Blaze. So that's what I'm using right here um, to fill in any spots that I felt like the chunky glitter didn't make it. Uh, I got Blaze in there, and she's filling the gaps very nicely. This is, uh, you know, one of the awesome perfect pairs that Glitter Makes It offers. And uh, so I'm going to just get, you know, I'm going to cover everything. And then I am going to go ahead and pat this glitter down just to make sure that the chunkies aren't sticking up because it's really hard when chunky is sticking up to sand it down because you run the risk of sanding the color out of the glitter. This is a uh, good quality polyester glitter and you might not have to worry about it, but I don't want to take my chances. So you do want to go in after, um, after you've got it, you know, all covered and just give it a good pat with your hand because you're using Mod Podge. You don't have to use a glove. You can use a glove if you want. It's totally up to you because you know, it will stick to your hand and uh, just get it on there all nice and flat. And then I'm gonna let this dry for probably at least a good hour before I put it on my turner. And then I'm gonna cover, I'm gonna do polycrylic on it to seal that glitter so it doesn't travel up the rest of the cup. All right, so my cup is dry and ready for me to put polycrylic on the glitter. And the reason why I'm using polycrylic is because I do not want this glitter to travel up into the tissue paper. A little bit is okay, but I wanna make sure, even though I sealed it with two times gloss, um, Rust-Oleum's two-time gloss clear spray. The polycrylic is really what's going to hold this in place and it's not once it once it dries this glitter is not going to move. So that's what I want to do and I'm going to let this dry for about an hour and then this cup will be ready for me to put on two coats of epoxy um, to get it nice and smooth before I move on to my decals. 
the polycrylic is dry. It's been drying for about an hour. Again, um, drying times are going to depend um, upon, you know, the temperature in your room, humidity conditions. Um, so, you know, dry times will definitely vary. Just keep that in mind. So even though it took me an hour, it could take you less or take you longer. So now I'm applying my first coat of epoxy. I am using Stone Coats Quick Coat. So this will be ready to put another coat on in about two hours and uh, just making sure I get it nice and smooth um, all up and down the cup across the glitter I'm not worried about the glitter traveling then I'm going to torch it to get out any bubbles and then put a second coat on before I'm ready to move on to my next step I don't usually show you this step but I feel like I'm making good time in this video so what I'm doing now is I have two coats of the epoxy on two coats of the quick coat and uh, it's been, you know, about a good six hours since I've been, done both coats and it's nice and dry. It's not even tacky. And I'm trimming it around the edge with my craft knife and there is no spray paint on the inside. So I'm actually good with that. And I'm going to take my sanding block. I'm going to go around the edges, making sure they are nice and smooth. I do not want any rough edges, even though these cups have lids and straws. Sometimes people want to drink out of them. So I want to make sure that there is nothing sharp that's going to, you know, hurt them or cut them or whatever so make sure you get that sanded up really nice and um, the bottom too make sure you get the bottom really well because that's where you tend to get your chunky glitter tends to be rougher at the bottom I mean not that you have to worry about cutting yourself but you want it to be a nice smooth finish so um, I'm taking a, um, a heavier grit sandpaper to the bottom and I'm going to go around that and make sure it's smoothed out because even though I've got two coats on, you can still feel some of them, you know, poking up. So sometimes I feel like no matter how much you try to flatten down that chunky, um, you still have some bumpies in there. So if it is too bad, though, if you have to sand too much, then you really do need to go in with another coat. Um, but I was fortunate enough that, you know, this sanding was going to work just fine for that. There wasn't enough sticking up where I felt that it warranted another coat of epoxy. And then once I feel like that's good, I'm gonna come in with my fine grit again and go over those spots because I don't want any deep gouges to show when I'm you know, putting on my next epoxy, which it wouldn't show anyway, but I just, you know, I do it as a precaution. Like I just don't, I wanna make sure that, you know, everything is nice and smooth and, you know, just fine. So, um, and then after this, I'm gonna wipe it down with my 91% alcohol and get all that debris off. You can wash it with Dawn dish soap and then it's ready to move on to the next step. All right guys, so I got two coats of epoxy over this. I have sanded this down and now I'm ready for my decals. So I'm actually using these stickers. I love these stickers and I found them last year and I, maybe even a year before, and I've had trouble finding them again. I, I just actually looked for them and I can't find them. So I'm hoping that they come out with them soon. Um, but I'm also using washi tape. So this came in a kit that I bought on Amazon and I picked out this one. I really, really like it. Uh, and so I'm gonna put it around the seam. And I'm just gonna roll it along. These colors are so absolutely beautiful together. So I'm gonna show you. Right now, I'm just kind of measuring this up. And I'm gonna trim it with my scissors because I don't, I don't do flush because it doesn't ever work for me, as I've said in some of my other videos. So, look how pretty that washi tape is. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I decided I'm not gonna put a saying on this. I just like the colors and I just wanna put the leaves on. And so, I don't think, you know, it doesn't always need to say anything. You know, sometimes you just, it just looks pretty as is. And, you know, I don't want to make this too busy and take away from the, um, the textured look of this cup. And I'm also not going to use too many of these leaves. I don't want it crowded and just, you know, I don't want to make it too busy. So I'm just going to put a few on and I'm going to do all the different colors, the yellow, the reddish, the orange, and the green. And, um, and then I, you know, I'm going to just put epoxy over this. Actually, 
I'm going to polycrylic it again. So, um, because I'm afraid that the epoxy will repel over the washi tape and over the sticker. So I will do a coat of polycrylic, let that dry for a half hour to an hour, depending on how long it takes to dry. And then I'm going to go in with, um, a coat of quick coat. And then my final coat of epoxy, which is, I use the super clear brand. And then this cup is going to be done folks. All right, my polycrylic is dry and so now i'm coming in with a coat of epoxy this is my first coat it is my uh, stone coats quick coat so it's going to be ready for my final coat in about two hours and i'm not going to show you that because how many times can i show you how to epoxy a cup so um, i am just getting this coat on and then i will be ready uh, to talk and do my final remarks Oh, and don't forget to torch for bubbles after you're done with your epoxy. I use the torch over the heat gun because the torch pops bubble, blah, 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 bubbles better. And the heat gun just moves the epoxy around more. All right, guys, this cup is done. I absolutely love the way this came out. I Look at the texture in here. It's so cool. I totally want to do this again. Um, you know, the washi tape is so pretty. And this glitter is amazing. The color change this orange to yellow, like gold and red, super pretty. I did put, you know, um, some shimmer, some ultra fine shimmer just to give this some sparkle on top of the leaves and the tissue paper textured look. Love, love, love this. I'm definitely going to be doing another one of these. Um, using different colors um, because yeah this just was so easy to make it really didn't take a long time and um, it just it had really really beautiful results so guys thank you all again for watching um, please give me a thumbs up please make sure you subscribe share comment I love to hear your guys feedback and I will see you all next time bye